Class Zero Overview. Why should we care about the brain? Understanding mental health at different levels. Hi, my name is Julia, and I'm here to talk to you about biological psychology, or what is also known as cognitive neuroscience. Roughly, this is about how the brain allows us to think, to feel, to remember, etc. Or, to put it another way, we're asking, what kind of mechanisms in the brain allow us to do all of these wonderful things? So, why do we care about the brain? I imagine some of you are just curious and may not need me to provide you with another convincing reason to be here. But some of you are probably just here because this is a required course. That's sort of unfortunate, but no worries. Hopefully by the end of this video, I will have convinced you about why you should care about the brain. Perhaps some of you are here because you wanted to study psychology in order to help people. But within the mental health profession, have you thought about how many different disciplines or subfields there are? Of course we have clinical psychology, but what about counseling? And what about social work? That, from clinical psychology to social work, seems to be on one end of a spectrum. Clinical psychologists may have to know more about how our mind works and what happens when certain functions break down. Counselors may be dealing with problems of a less clinical or pathological nature. That is to say, some people who see counselors may have issues or problems that they want to work out, but they might not be sick, per se. And then there are the social workers, who help people struggling with various problems, often with respect to their relationship with society and how they interact with other people. And sometimes, these problems are psychological in nature, too. So social workers, likewise, need to know a fair bit about mental disorders and psychology. On the other side of the spectrum, there are people who deal with individuals who are mentally unwell from a more medical perspective. Like clinical psychologists, psychiatrists also treat patients who have mental disorders. Besides talking to their patients, psychiatrists also prescribe drugs to them. And then there are neurologists, who are supposed to be treating people whose problems have a more brain-based origin, that is to say, these are more like hardware problems of the brain rather than software problems of the mind. Examples of these hardware problems include Parkinson's disease or a stroke in which you can see the problems directly in brain scans. And examples of software level psychological problems include depression and phobia. Now then, besides neurology, there is also neurosurgery. The difference is mainly that in neurology, we use methods like brain scanning to diagnose and treatments often involve drugs. But in neurosurgery, doctors actually go directly to the source of the hardware. They open up people's heads and perform surgery, such as the cutting out of a brain tumor. Along the spectrum, one should see that there are many boundary cases that do not neatly fit into one particular subfield. What about schizophrenia? Is that a problem of the mind or of the brain? Or is it related to the social situation that the person is in, like stigma? One thing that we have to remember is, we're helping the same people. The different approaches are different, but they complement each other. So even if you have already decided that you want to focus on one particular approach, understanding mental health issues at one specific level, you need to know what your neighbors are doing too. This way, you may be able to switch fields later on, or at least you know whom to refer your patients to when you need to. So, brains are important so long as you're interested in psychology and mental disorders in some way.